Yeah, hi everyone, Rob here again. This is a follow-up to my last video, which was about configuring the desktop Microsoft OneNote application toolbar for easy access to certain tools here up on the uh, top um, title bar of the window. If you haven't seen that, I'll put the link down in the uh, description. And I always should point out these videos are uploaded at um, 720p, so you should go down here somewhere, down there in your YouTube window, click on the little cog icon, and select 720p off the uh, pop-up menu, and that way you get the best quality. Because um, some of this is quite small, and at least you should get as, as good as you can. Okay. Um, I've got one further improvement to this. Uh, someone in one of the comments suggested removing my taskbar from the top here because uh, you know I was trying to re give myself as much space as possible and part of that was to hide the ribbon bar keep the tabs and, and move some buttons onto this uh, title bar okay that was pretty good um, now the suggestion is to move the taskbar I have the taskbar at the top I've said previously because all my menus are at the top in Windows and it's a logical place for me to go, certainly on the desktop and in the past on tablet and laptops and so on. Um, you know, look, all the menus are at the top. There's nothing down the bottom. There almost never is. So if I'm going to keep going up there to do stuff with my mouse, I may as well go up there to get, you know, what used to be the start menu and so on and so forth. Note that when you do that on Windows 8, the start menu, if you're accessing it with a mouse, is still here in the bottom left corner. Um, so that's a little bit weird. Um, however, it, I guess it should be. Now, so the suggestion was to auto-hide the taskbar and gain that extra bit of space. And so I'm going to try that, and I'll try a couple of other things too. And I've actually come up with a solution that I prefer to all of this and gives me that extra space. Um, what I'm going to do first is show what happens if I auto-hide the taskbar. So you right-click it or, or hold and click to get the properties. And in the properties dialog, there is a option there to auto hide the taskbar. Oops, come back here. Auto hide the taskbar. So we'll do that and click apply. Okay, now the OneNote header has moved up and the taskbar has vanished. So that's all fine and good. Now the question is um, I need to get to that taskbar to do some things like access the keyboard you know, how do I get the keyboard and so on. So on a mouse-based system, you normally just move your mouse into the, up to that edge and it will then come back down. But on this system, what am I going to have to do? So let me just try a few things. I'll try dragging down doesn't do it. I'll try dragging up. Oh, that drags the whole thing up. Um, I'll just try touching the edge. Ah, there. I can get it down, and then I could, you know, do something like get the keyboard up. But as soon as I go back here, that vanishes. And then to get it back, I suppose you could get used to that. It's, uh... Yeah, if you touch in exactly the right place, and if you haven't, if you've got a clear spot with no icons, you see, if I tried to do that over here, or tried to do that over here, I'd be hitting buttons. But if I've got this clear spot in there, I can sort of, well, I can sort of feel my way up to it. There we go. Let me just try that. No. No, okay. It's not really suitable. Um, it was a good idea. Works on the desktop. Not really suitable for this. So, um, next thing I thought I'd try is move it back down to the bottom. Let's go back to properties, which I've got open. And you can select from this drop down which corner you want it to go. And if you've got a mouse, you can just click and drag it into the corners once it's unlocked. But we'll just use this option here. And I'll keep the auto hide on, and let's see if we can use it any better down here. So, say we're in OneNote, and we want to access the, the bar, and I'm just sort of touching the area with my finger. A swipe, swipe down, there. Um, 
It's about the same as the top. I can sort of, if I'm careful, and if there's nothing on my screen at that point, because you see it keeps moving the cursor to where I'm pushing, I can get it to come up. Um, again, it's, it's nice to have the extra space, but it's not really working. Move it away, move it back. No, it's no good. Okay, so next thing, let's make the toolbar show. Uh, oops, go back to the settings. I won't auto hide it, um, but instead, there's another thing that we could do. It's got an option here to use small taskbar buttons. So I'll first remove the auto hide, and there we go. That comes back. Um, and in theory, it must have obviously gives us the same amount of space, whether it's, whether it's top and bottom, because the application is pushed out of the way at that point. So we can. There's an option here to use small taskbar buttons. That's the old style Windows um, icons, and it changes those into the small ones. I'm just going to move this window down until the bottom edge is nearly touching the taskbar, and then when I change the icons, I'll be able to see if it saved any space. Use small buttons, apply. Okay, that looks like it saved about a quarter or two fifths of the um a quarter or so of the taskbar vertically. That's another few millimeters, that's not so bad. And these icons are now quite tiny. They're still big enough to recognize and to tap of course, but they are small. The keyboard is also now quite a bit smaller. Quite a lot smaller, as is everything else. Um but it's only the keyboard that matters down here. You need to be able to hit it with your thumb. Um, well, that's interesting. It's uh, it's okay. Anyhow, the next thing um, I wanted to try out was one of these other options to move the taskbar to the side. And if I move it to the side, and then we've still got combine buttons and hide labels enabled. Just go OK. Now it's over here on the right. And that all of a sudden is looking very interesting. Because some of the icons, these ones here, become big again. Notice the, the bar is quite wide, and that's as small as it gets. If I let it use the large taskbar buttons again, I'm just going to switch this over here so I can confirm whether or not the taskbar gets any bigger. So use small apply. No, the taskbar stays the same width, but I get nice big icons. Um, that's quite interesting. I can use that with my fingers. So there's IE, opens up, close it, you know, there's Word, and close it. Pretty cool. Um, there are other options whereby you can uh, show labels. Da, 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 da. Always combine, test was full, combine, never combine. That never combines the button, so you never have to, you know, open the sub menu of icons. There we go. All looks the same. Um, and it normally brings up labels with some programs, not with all, but it, with some you actually get a label there. Um, depends what you're doing. So if I, oh, go to. Notepad. Uh, I don't get a uh, don't get a label. Maybe when it's when I open a saved one or something. In any case, I'm going to go always combine hide labels. I had to show something. I don't need that option there. That there is that hot corner. When you move your mouse to the top corner, it'll uh, sh sh hide all the windows and show you the desktop. I use that on my desktop computer a lot. Not on the tablet. It's not necessary. Um, jump lists. Uh, let's just see if they're working. Uh, okay, yeah. Yeah, so you can go to an app and drag out. Yeah, and you get the jump list. It's pretty cool. Drag out and you get the jump list. You can do that with your pen too. So keep those. Keep those happening. And go OK. 
So that gives us, um, at risk of hitting things with my palm, um, and if you think, you know, if you like this layout and decide to use it, you could always move it to the other side. Uh, the only drawback there is that the keyboard is then on the left. Maybe if you're left-handed that's better, I don't know, um, either side. I think it's quite cool here for me. But uh, I guess over on the left it would be cool as well. Certainly you get this extra space again. Um, then I can sort of lean on it a little bit further. Um, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Now, of course, OneNote also has a full screen mode that you can turn on. Uh, there, just that little tiny little thing up there. Plonk. And it gives you as much space as possible. You don't get the uh, toolbars then, but interestingly, it gives you the full ribbon bar when you. Uh, when you go looking for that, but if you're just taking notes with one particular pen, um, that's pretty good too. Or if it's a keyboard that you're using, turn on the keyboard and type away. Let me just see what happens when I dock. Yeah, that's fine. So that's probably the maximum amount of space you can get. Another way to use it, of course, is to turn it sideways and uh, let it spin. And in this situation, you've got uh, quite a quite good access to the whole screen, to the width, or at least that which is visible. These buttons over there on the left are still quite good. You can make quite a lot of notes down the screen, all the way down the page. And uh, and at the bottom, if you bring up the keyboard, it. Um, it gives you this narrower view of the keyboard, which is potentially useful for thumbs. It's like a big, big uh, smartphone. It's not bad at all. Um, let's put that on the page. This is not bad at. Oops, can't see what I'm typing at all. Is it? So that's another way to use it. You sort of get the full space of an iP that you would have on an iPad, uh, but you get this keyboard as well, without taking up half the screen. Um, so that's another cool way to use it. And having the taskbar on the left uh, sort of suits. Again, jump lists are there, or you can put it on the right. Doesn't really matter. Uh, you can move the page around and zoom it. That's all looking very good. Not bad at all and uh, go back to full view to access your pages and so on. It's as simple as that. Okay, I'll just uh, flip this around again. Bring it back to this position. And uh, restore this. See now how that's been pushed up? That's actually the keyboard mode that did that. That was because I had it in this docked mode where the sides, it goes all the way across. If I just do it in that mode, then it won't then it won't do that. Just confirm that by going vertical, turning the keyboard on, going horizontal again, and get rid of the keyboard and it stays there at full screen. So that's one reason to use that um, sort of floating mode for the keyboard. Mm. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use this like this. Uh, hope you enjoy the tip. And uh, if you have any other questions or suggestions, um, just let me know in the comments. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.